it's Lisa here. I'm super excited to walk you through my easy peasy animal drawing kit. It's a kit that'll help you draw cute animals like a pro. In this video, I'll do a quick demo of all the goodies included. Then we'll move on to building our animal character using the framework and brushes included. And finally, as a bonus, I'll show you how I apply color to the cute critter using my Aquareal watercolor brushes for Procreate. Included in this drawing kit is a carefully created layered document with both the animal heads and perfectly positioned bodies. Simply turn layers on and off to build the base for your animal. You'll also receive adorable clothing items you can add to your character. Each item is designed to fit the corresponding body, which you'll find in the Procreate brush set. The heads for each animal are available in three-quarter and front view. To use the front view in Procreate, simply turn the head layer off and use the stamps available in the brush set. You'll also find the tails included in the brush set right at the bottom. If you're using Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop or Affinity, you'll find the clothing nestled in a subfolder for each body pose. To ramp up the cuteness factor, I've created fun accessories you can add to your animal. These are available as brushes for Procreate, Photoshop and Affinity. For Illustrator, you'll find all the shapes well labeled in the layered document. To kickstart your drawing process, I've included 10 pre-built animals. Just drop them into your file, create a new layer and start drawing. You'll also receive 14 color palettes, perfect for animal characters, plus a super helpful guide on how I apply those palettes to an animal so you can see them in action. The guide also includes advice on how to create your own palettes, tips for adding cuteness to your character and a step-by-step -step instruction for each software version of the kit. This kit is perfect for tackling various poses for the same animal as we all know how hard those can be. It's designed to increase your confidence in drawing animals and produce work that you're proud to sell. Now that you have an idea of what's included in this collection, let's dive into creating our first animal character. I'll be using Procreate to build my animal. If you're using Illustrator, Photoshop or Affinity, although your interface and tools are different, you'll still benefit from this tutorial as the steps are the same. But as I mentioned, you'll find full PDF instructions included in the kit for all those apps. Once you've imported the Easy Peasy Animal Drawing document into Procreate, which should appear at the top of your gallery, go ahead and make a duplicate. I recommend making the duplicate to avoid accidentally damaging the original file. But remember, you can always re-download your order again if you made a boo-boo. I've included two sizes of the document for Procreate to accommodate larger and smaller iPads. If you're in doubt on which one to choose, I recommend going with the smaller one. I'm actually using the smaller one even though I have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro because I find the smaller one is 100% fine for creating the framework. Because remember, this is just the framework and not your final artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe left to duplicate my document and open up. The first thing you'll notice when you open the document is an instruction layer. You can go ahead and turn that off or even delete if you like. So once we remove the instruction layer, you'll see there's a default head and a default body that's in view. Today I'll be creating a cute little elephant and she'll be floating through the air holding a balloon. So we need to find the elephant's head and the floating body. So the first thing I want to do is expand the heads. You'll see there are 20 different um, animal heads available for you to choose from. These are all three quarter views. If you wanted to have the head facing a, a forward, like a front view, you can use one of the stamps included in the animal kit. 
So if you're using Illustrator or Photoshop or Affinity, you'll see the heads are actually part of the layered document as well. So only with Procreate do you need to actually select one of the heads using the stamps. You'll find the heads all the way at the bottom, heads front view. So if we wanted to, for example, use the cat's face facing front, we would select that cat brush, come over to the draw here layer or create a new layer and then just simply stamp out your cat and resize. Oops. But today we're not going to do that. We're going to use one of the pre-made heads that are already included, which is the elephant. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear that and scroll down until we find the elephant. I'm going to turn that on, turn my cat layer off and just close that folder and then I'm going to expand the bodies layer. So again here you'll find all different bodies you can choose from. I just want to toggle some examples. You can have the little elephant on a bicycle or sitting um, on the little bum or a side profile or standing etc. So today we're going to be using number two which is floating. And I'm just going to take note of the name or the number of that layer and you'll see why later. So we're using number two and I'm just going to close that. So now you'll notice that we actually can't see the arm of that little guy, which is why it was important to duplicate the document in the first place because we're going to be making a couple of changes to the head. So I'm just going to expand that folder again. I'm going to select my elephant. And I just want to bring the opacity down a dash so I can see what's going on underneath. And now I just want to move the head so that we see a little bit more of the arm. Again, this is why it was important to make a duplicate because now we're making changes to the master document. And just want it over something like that. And then I just want to delete that area of the head so that we can actually see the arm. So just using any old eraser and then turn the opacity back up and you see now we can see the arm that's sitting in front of the ear. So don't be afraid to adjust the head to suit um, your drawing. You could even rotate the head slightly and as you saw I moved it a dash just to suit what it is that I'm trying to create. Okay, so the next part we want to do is add some accessories to her, but first we're going to add some clothing. So on the draw here layer, I just want to select the same color as my framework, making sure I'm on the right layer, coming over to the brush set. I just quickly want to run through the goodies that are included in the brush set for Procreate. So the first items you'll see are all the available accessories. And if we keep scrolling down, we'll start reaching the clothing, all the clothing items for the different poses. So each body has been named and underneath each of these names are the appropriate clothing that matches that body. So if you can recall, we were using number two floating. So these are the items available for that body. And if we just keep scrolling down, you'll see all bodies have their own little goodies that are available for them. And coming right down to, this is where you'll find all the heads that are front view. And if we keep scrolling down, you'll find all the tails. Okay, so we're gonna add some clothing. So coming back to number two, I want it to be a girl, so I'm gonna choose the dress. I'm just going to stamp once, coming over to my transform tool, I'm going to scale it down and just move it into position. You'll see, if we have a look at that area over there, you'll see it needs to come up against her leg. So we're probably looking at something like that. Over here you'll see the items are actually overlapping, but that's not a problem. We're just simply going to zoom in and just delete those areas that we don't want. 
The next thing we want to do is create a new layer and this time we're going to add some accessories. The first one is going to be a cute little uh, sort of sling bag. So I'm choosing sling bag. Stamping once, coming over to my transform. I just want to flip it because I want the bag to be lying that way. And again, I'm not worried too much about things, um, lines overlapping and getting confusing because we're going to clean that up. I think that looks about right. Again, zooming in. I'm just using my eraser and I'm just taking away those unwanted lines. And I'm going to do the same with the dress. And you'll notice we'll need to do the same for the body. But just for now, I'm going to work on the dress. So if you're finding it too confusing to have your layers the same color as the body, in other words, you could use purple, for example, for each um, item, just so that you can see the different line work much easier. I do recommend, though, that once you finish, that you make them all the same color. It just makes it easier for you to go ahead and trace it later on. Okay, so new layer. This time I'm going to add a little hat. Stamping it out once, and her little hat is kind of flying off her head <laughs> as she floats through the air. I think that's about right. And then finally, I want to add that balloon, but because we don't have much room left, I'm going to add that in the other documents um, that we'll be working on. So once I've done my framework, the idea is for you to create a new document and then uh, paste your framework into that document so that you can start drawing your final piece. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But the first thing I want to do is just clean up some of this line work over here just to make it easier for me to see what I need to trace. So I'm going to expand my body layer, coming to floating, using my eraser. I'm just going to get rid of some of those lines. And you'll see it's much easier now to see our little elephant. Okay, so we're done with our framework for now. So what I want to do is I want to copy this and paste it into a new document. And the easiest way to do that is coming over to our actions. We're going to make sure we're on share, JPEG, and then just hit copy. And coming back to our gallery. If you can recall, I'm going to use my Aquarelle brushes to apply color. So I'm using one of the canvases that come with Aquarelle, and this one is chiffon. I'm just going to open that, making sure I'm on the draw here layer. I'm just going to swipe down with three fingers and hit paste. And then we just want to enlarge her. making sure we need, leave enough room for the balloon, creating a new layer, coming down to our balloon, stamp once, using my transform tool, I'm just enlarging it and moving it into position, probably something like that, and then I'm just zooming in just to clean up that line work, and then we want to flatten that, and I just want to bring down the opacity of that. So because all our line work is the same, it's all uniform and bringing down the opacity will apply evenly to everything. And there we are, ready to start tracing our little elephant. So creating a new layer. I'm going to come over to my palettes. Included in the kit are 14 fun palettes that you can use for your characters. In this particular instance, I'm going to be using number four, which has some lovely greys and a cute lilac that I want to use for her dress. So I'm going to use, but the first thing I want to do is do some line work. And I personally uh, like using a brown color, like a sepia color for my line work. But you could, of course, use any color you prefer. So what I want to do is just want to grab the brown from the other palette, which is number five and 
coming over to my aquarel brushes I'm going to be using Lisa's pencil which is not included in aquarel it's, it's from one of my other sets it's from my delicious texture set and I prefer the sort of grungy pencil effect that that has just want to bring the opacity of this down a bit more yeah that's better at the sketching stage you can create a new layer that is just a rough sketch where you make adjustments and add your own whimsical touches to your character or you can dive straight in and create your final line work that you'll be using in your final piece that's what I'll be doing today I'm going to dive straight in and this layer is going to be my final line work that I'll be using in my piece So don't be afraid to, as I said, make any changes that you want. I'm just going to add some eyes. And little eyebrows. So her ribbon is overlapping her ear. I'm going to make sure to keep that in. And you can decide how much detail you want to add to your accessories and your line work for this piece I'm just simply going to use the framework lines as my guide I'm just going to add a little, little mouth here. So I intentionally left off important features like eyes and mouths because I'd like you to be able to interpret um, the character to suit your own style. It also gives you freedom to create some lovely expressions. Of course here you could use a buckle instead of this little strap.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with my line work, I think. So what I'm going to do is just turn off our framework and see where we're at. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to adding some color using the watercolor brushes. So I'm going to create a new layer underneath my actual sketch layer. I just want to turn my sketch layer to multiply because I prefer that look. You, of course, don't have to. It's entirely up to you. And then we're going to, as I mentioned, use um, number four. I'm going to use the lightest gray. And starting with the all-rounder brush, I'm just going to simply start applying color. And the thing with watercolor brushes, you want to just go slowly and not lift your pencil. If you do, that's not a problem. You can always blend areas that overlap. Or perhaps you actually like the overlapping areas, which mimic watercolor in real life. But in this instance, I'd like a smooth finish. So I'm just carefully applying color. And just slowing down when I come to the edge. I just want to blend that. So I'm using the wet blending brush. This little elephant's quite delicate, so what I want to do is just turn off my paper effects, the actual paper layer, just so that you can see the finish is a bit better. Okay, coming back to my brush, I just want to finish this area and fix that. Whoops. Okay, so the base of her skin is done. And I want to add some color variation to make it look even more realistic, um, like watercolor. So we're going to be using some of the stamps available that's part of the um, Aquarel brushes, creating a new layer. I'm going to turn that to multiply and make that a clipping mask. Coming over to my stamps, I'll be using the Bloom Stamp uh, 1. And we're just going to use the darker gray. We're going to change the opacity in a minute. But I'm just going to randomly start applying areas of color variation on her body. You can use any of the stamps to get this effect. I just wanted darker over there, but I didn't want it over her face, which is why I deleted that. And the same for this area. So this is just to create that uh, definition between her trunk and her arm. So we're just going to adjust the opacity and bring that down so it looks a little bit more natural. And again, creating a new layer. This time I want quite a biggish uh, stamp over her head. I'm going to be using my, one of my favorite brushes, the Splotch Round with Bloom. I'm going to stamp once and 
just rotate it and what I want to do is just remove some of uh, the, the paint pigment over here because in this area I actually want to use pink so using my eraser gonna do that same for the other side and we're gonna clip that and this time I'm going to use linear burn because that'll blend better with what's already on our canvas and just bring the opacity down a dash and then using our smudge tool just fix that area over there Yeah, I think that's looking pretty cute. What I want to do is just add some white area by the eyes. So I'm just going to choose whites and let's see. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll just use the, my uh, watercolor brush just to add that area of white. just to give her eyes a little bit more definition. Okay, so we want to start adding some pink to her ears. And again, we're going to be using clipping masks for this. So I'm going to create a new layer, clipping mask. And let's use a different stamp. Let's go with that one. I'm going to use pink. Just stamp once and you'll see it creates a lovely subtle pink hue on the same layer let's use my bloom again oops you can either create a new layer so I'm going to do that because I have those layers available or you would just need to select that but I'm going to create a new layer And then just erase areas I don't want. So we only want to keep it to the actual ear. And I want to merge down and then finally I just want to use a slightly darker color and using the bloom stamp again we just want to add oops so this is all about experimentation I just want to add a dash of a, a color variation to some of the areas and then of course we don't want it over there so I'm just deleting that and you'll see just by adding that darker uh, pinky color we've, we've added even more variation to um, the pink area which gives it that more natural look so I want to add some cheeks using the same layer coming back to my original pink I'm going to use one of the drops in this case let me see what drop 4 looks like Okay, dash too big. I think that looks better. And I'm going to go one more time because I want it to be a little bit more pronounced. And I think she's looking pretty cute. Okay, so I'm going to move on to her little dress. Creating a new layer using the lilac. Again, coming back to my all-rounder. We're just going to try and complete the entire area without lifting pencil. Okay, 
again some variation so we're going to create a new layer make sure it is a clipping mask I'm going to use a slightly darker lilac using one of my stamps let's try that one I'm just simply going to stamp out and see where that takes me yeah I think that's looking pretty cute If you start running out of layers, you can always just flatten. Once you're happy with something, you can always just flatten it. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the little bag and choose the darker gray. Again, coming back to my all-rounder. You'll see I left gaps here, so I just want to fix that. Coming back to my dress layer and liquify. I'm just going to tease that back into position just so that it reaches the edge of the strap. And over here. a great way to fix any errors especially with watercolor because you want to retain that hard edge that you see and this is the best way to manipulate your shapes without having to paint again okay so now what I want to do is work on the straps and the little hat so coming back to that original uh, sepia brown that I chose, I want to create a new layer on top of that, uh, the bag layer, and again using my all-rounder. I want to use the lilac for the ribbon as well so I'm coming back to the same dress layer and choosing that lilac so what I like to do is keep all the same colors on the same layer that way I can manipulate them all at once if I ever wanted to change it And I think what I want to do is create cute little polka dots on her balloon, also using the lilac. Oops. So I'm just trying to imagine the curve of the balloon as I place the dots. That just helps to give the balloon a bit more form as well. Oops. Mm. Yep, I think that's it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to adding some uh, pattern on her dress. And then I want to add some uh, shadow as well to her body, just to give her some more definition. So making sure I'm above the dress layer, creating a new layer. Again, I'm going to use that same sepia brown. And I just want to create a very simple little pattern. So creating patterns and adding special details like this to your character is a great way to 
put your own touch to it and give her some personality. I'm going to come back to my sketch layer and I just want to add some cute little details here and there. So these are like little stitches. And some movement. Just want to add some color to her, her little lip area. Okay, so we need to just add a little bit of color to her balloon using the original gray as the base. But I think what I want to do is just go a dash lighter. Um, Possibly something like that. Let's have a look what it looks like. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so we just need to take it below the purple layer, which I will do in a second. So just underneath her dress and not a clipping mask. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add a shadow layer to her now. So it's just below the sketch layer. I'm going to use the kind of in-between gray, setting it to multiply. I just want to bring that down a bit because I know that's going to be quite dark. We can always adjust that. And now I'm imagining my light source coming in that direction. This is just a loose interpretation of where I think the shadow will fall. Just want to bring that opacity up about a dash. Just, yeah, that looks better. So we are just imagining where shadow will fall. Okay, so the darker gray is a bit harsh for her body. So I'm coming back to the lighter gray. Yeah, that looks better. And I just want to increase the size. So her little ear flap would create a bit of a shadow here. Yeah? Oh, maybe not so much. And if you don't like the harsh edges, you can always just blend those a dash. So I'm just going between those two tools as I'm working. Okay. 
I'm gonna make this a dash darker because this area will be darker and then coming back to that gray as I start working on the clothing I think that particular gray might be too dark for her dress so I'm just gonna take that upper dash that's better and I'm just adding where the folds would go this whole area will be in shadow I'm going to come back to that darker grey for her bag this whole side will be in shadow and then finally the balloon that side will be in shadow I just want to soften it and depending on how high you want to show she's floating what you could do is also create a little floating shadow as she lifts off the ground and there you have it we've now completed our cute little elephant using the framework to start off with we built it up then we sketched it out and we applied color using the aquarel brushes I hope you enjoyed watching that and I hope you love using this kit happy creating